violence of global economy. In my opinion, global economy links directly with imperial powers. You can go back to the Roman Empire, which controlled global economy at that time. Then British Empire, now American Empire, and last but not least is Chinese Empire. The difference from the ancient time and modern time is that above the empires, there are also transnational corporations, which sometimes even control the empire. Unless we understand this, we will not understand structural violence. I give you just concrete examples. Gandhi was a great man fighting against the British Empire. He was educated in England and he didn't understand the structural violence of the British Empire. He admired the empire for its modern education, fairness, etc. Until he was thrown out from the train in South Africa because of his skin, not white. That's, he started realizing there's something wrong in the empire. Then, just 102 years ago, he started writing on Hein Swaraj, that is, surveillance, that is, local economy, not global economy. And he felt that the empire had power, military power, controlling the press, have the best intellectual output, but the empire has not moral legitimacy and above all, no spiritual legitimacy. I think that's why he worked on that issues. He called Satyagra, the power of the truth. The empire don't have the truth, neither British Empire, nor American Empire, a transnational corporation. The truth must be carried out non-violently. And by and large, he succeeded, but he also faced failure. He succeeded because the power of the truth, the power of the people, the power of localization, the power of refusing imperial education, imperial power, non-violently. Yet, we can also say Gandhi movement failed. It failed for two or three reasons. <coughs> Lesson number one, the people who succeeded Gandhi, namely Nehru, did not believe in the power of the truth, did not believe in Heinz Varaj. Nehru wanted to be the last white man running India. <laughs> and that her heritage has come right now. <coughs> India is now free of British Empire, but India is entirely under American Empire. And of course, under the transnational corporation. Second failure, in my opinion, Gandhi's movement more or less a one-man show. <laughs> if there was enough Sankha, enough people around him with equality, no one-man show, I think the, 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 the movement would last until now. On top of that, Gandhi tried to understand global structural violence but he ignored national structural violence. He accepted the caste system in India. The Brahmins are top, the Shatra second, the, Shat, uh, the, 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 the merchants the third, Sutra, the laborers at the bottom, and worse than that, it, the untouchables. Gandhi felt that this Car structure is vital to Indian civilization. And I think it's the worst kind of structure anywhere. And he did not tackle that. 
That's why I feel that to tackle structural violence at the global level, you have to challenge national structure, local structure, and from the Buddhist point of view, you have to challenge your own personal structures. Often, we also create violence for ourselves in the name of success, in the name of richness. We sometimes destroy our body, our mind, and worst of all, it's our spirit. I think we have to grow our spirit non-violently, create peace inside, then with good friends together, understand the structural violence at the local level, national level, international level, and then there is a chance to overcome structural violence of global economy. Since I have very short time, I cannot go on further, but if you're interested, Johanna Macy and I will give you more Buddhist perspective tomorrow, right? And then you have all the answer. Thank you. <laughs>